How is it going, lads and ladies? It is Petrifying Pumpkins here, and today I'm annoyed. I'm pissed off with Sony, PlayStation, in some ways. Not a huge deal, probably, but still something that's gotten under my skin and uh, has grinded my gears, pissed in my cornflakes, as it were. I'm wearing my PlayStation t-shirt backwards as a sign of disrespect, as I do when PlayStation make a mistake. Because of this blog post, PlayStation blog, interview with Herman Hulst. Herman Hulst, of course, this gentleman here, he used to be the main guy at Guerrilla Games. What's the word for the main guys? CEOs? No, that's not right. Presidents? Probably the president. He was probably the president of Guerrilla Games. Last year, I think it was last year, he got promoted to uh, head of like PlayStation Worldwide Studios. So he's kind of like, he's under Jim Ryan, but he's still up there. He took uh, Shuhei Yoshida's job. Anyway, I like Herman Hulst. He's a... Uh, a straight shooter you know he's i like the fact that he's got like a, a history with game development like he was in all them killzone games the first horizon game that was all him uh, so the fact that someone like him is the head of playstation i always thought that was like a good idea even though i love shuhei Yoshida, and i think maybe he got did a little dirty or something i don't know but, uh, but whatever regardless the point is that's not what annoys me it's not herman host it's what he's saying uh, so the title of this is what's next for playstation studios which is fine it's like a q a basically so the first question do you see single player that's not that's not really interesting basically he's saying yes single player is important to us partnerships with second parties is important to us that's the next question i'm going to get to the good stuff i guess i should start by saying you know this isn't actually virtual reality related uh, but because i am a bit of a sony pony a bit of a playstation fanboy as uh, some people would say this does interest me a great deal and because this is a playstation virtual reality dedicated channel Maybe a lot of you guys are, you know, into PlayStation stuff as well, not just virtual reality. So it might be worth talking about. Basically, what's pissing me off here is the fact that cross-gen games are, like, more pervasive than I was initially thinking. Okay, so this is the big one here. So, how does PlayStation 4 factor into PlayStation Studios' development vision? Is it still a focus internally for future game development? So Herman says it very much is. You can't build a community of over 110 million PS4 owners and then just walk away from it, Rise. You can. Or you don't have to walk away from it. I mean, look at the past generations we've had. You can keep the third party stuff. That can be cross-gen. Your FIFAs, your Call of Duties, your Battlefields, all that shit. That can go back and forth. But there's no need to hold back. Well, in this instance, Gran Turismo 7 and God of War and, of course, Horizon as well. Uh, there's no need to hold these games back with the PS4. I know from a business perspective, it makes perfect sense. Like if you shut them out, you're shutting out a load of money. But in other ways, it's making the PlayStation 5 look less attractive, in my opinion. Now that might not necessarily care about that because the PS5 is still selling like hotcakes. If it's on the shelf, it's gone the next second. So that's probably not a big deal. Anyway, let me keep reading and then I'll get to why I don't like this. Uh, I think that'd be bad news for fans of the PS4 and frankly, not very good business. So I don't disagree with that necessarily. It's not good business in one aspect, but he'll go on to it here in a sec. Where it makes sense to develop a title for both PS4 and PS5 for Horizon Forbidden West, the next God of War and GT7. And by the way, I hate the way that it's just subtly dropped in there. So for the longest time, we knew Horizon was going to both. Everyone kind of assumed God of War maybe will. And I think most people thought GT7 was probably going to be PS5 exclusive. But now he's just like, oh, by the way, yeah, God of War GT7, they're coming to PS4 too. You know, they're going to be held back by that 2013 hardware. Uh, don't, don't, don't worry about that though, you know. We'll continue looking at that, and if PS4 owners want to play that game, then they can. If PS4 owners want to play, or PS4 owners want to play that game, they can buy a PS5. I mean, they can't, because they're sold out, but you get the point that I would be trying to make. If they want to go on and play the PS5 version, that game will be there for them. That being said, it's also very important to have showpieces for the PS5. Hence the development of Returnal and Ratchet that are exclusive to PS5. Two games? Herman, is that enough? Returnal and Ratchet that are exclusive to PS5? I think maybe we, it's very important to have more than two games for showpieces for the PS5, in my opinion. You know? I mean, look. The example I always go to is Horizon Zero Dawn, the one that came out in 2017, I think it was. One of the developers was interviewed 
they said that they wanted to have flying mounts in that game. So in that game, you're able to like override the machines and you can ride them. There was like a, a deer one and a, a horse one or whatever. They wanted to have the flying ones that Aloy could hijack and then you could fly around. But because the PS4's aging hardware, even at the time, they couldn't stream in the levels, like, you know, the world, I guess you should say, fast enough, so they had to scrap that. Otherwise, it would have been just a very slow flying thing, which would have been trash. So, obviously, the fact that Forbidden West also has to be running on that 2013 hardware, you would imagine they're probably still not going to have flying mounts unless they found some kind of workaround to get it working this time, which maybe they have. I'm not saying they won't, but that's just like a very clear-cut example of how having to run on 2013 hardware is going to hurt these games. Now, they did have the Horizon Forbidden West showcase a few days ago, and the game looks, looks stunning. Running on the PS5 looks fantastic. PS4 version is definitely not going to look that good. It's not the visuals that I'm worried about with God of War or Gran Turismo 7. It's in terms of gameplay features. You know, I mean, imagine God of War. A big focus of the original game was moving between these realms. You have to go to this room, a travel room, and then you'd load in, and then there was all these kind of crazy special effects. Or you'd go to the World Tree, God of War Ragnarok, if they focused on PS5 only. Maybe they could do like a Ratchet and Clank thing, where it's like instant rift. Open up a rift, walk into the different realm. No need for all that, like, downtime. So that's kind of annoying. Just wanted to get that off my chest, wanted to rant about that. And again, I understand from their point of view, it would be stupid, kind of, to leave all that money on the table because people, are, you know, they're going to buy. Even though, as I say that, I'm pretty sure Miles Morales sold way more on PS5 than it did on PS4. It came out in both. So really, in the end, like, would it really hurt their pocket a huge amount? Would it, in the long run, get more people eager to buy a PS5. I know everyone's eager to buy a PS5, but let's say they sell 20 million PS5s. All of a sudden, everyone who really wanted one has one at that stage. Then you're talking about the people who are like, well, if it has enough good games, then they're going to be looking at like, oh, well, that's on PS4. Do I really want to buy a PS5 for this? And maybe sales of the PS5 will slow down because of these decisions, you know? That would be my way of looking at it. Not the end of the world. I'm sure God of War 2 is going to be fantastic, and Horizon, I know, it looks fantastic already. But, you know, I can't help thinking about, you know, the flying mounts. Are they out the window because of these decisions, you know? Who knows what else we'll be missing out on. And then they talk about PC gaming as well, and I mean, how important Japan is. I'm not too interested in those kind of topics. And I should also mention that they've he casually slid in that, you know, God of War got delayed to 2022. Doesn't bother me at all. As soon as I saw God of War 2021, I was like, no way that's coming in 2021. It was just a logo reveal, uh, and they hadn't shown anything since, so I think everyone was expecting that to drop to 2022, so that doesn't bother me whatsoever. But the fact that it's coming to PS4, and Gran, Gran Turismo probably less so, but God of War, that's a big one, you know? And th the way he acknowledges as well, you know, it's always very important. It's also very important to have showpieces for PS5. I couldn't agree more with that. So why are you taking away show pieces for the PS5? Returnal, excellent. Ratchet, probably going to be excellent. Looks excellent. But that's just two games. When is the next PS5 exclusive? You know, after Ratchet, what's it going to be? It's not going to be Horizon. That's on PS4. Not going to be God of War. That's not going to be on PS4. Not going to be Gran Turismo 7. So how long are we going to have to wait before we see another game take advantage of the PS5 property like Ratchet? Because Ratchet cannot run on the PS4 because of what that game does in terms of like stream, like instant world, like they built that into the game design. So it's impossible for that to run. If it was to run on PS4, it would be filled with like awful loading times that would like break the flow of the gameplay or whatever and it would ruin us. <sighs> so yeah, Herman Holst. What are you doing? People at PlayStation, what are you doing? You know, I know you're thinking about the money, but that's, I feel like that's a short term, maybe point of view. Maybe let's think a little bit more long term. Anyway, that's my rant over with. Maybe you agree with me. Maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you think I'm an idiot. Let me know. I know already, but you can let me know I'm an idiot as well in the comments below. And that is this for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Before I go, let me thank my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as we speak. Thanks to their generosity, they're keeping this channel nice and moist. In particular, the top tier Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen right now. Tradition, Crum, Pete Hawkins, Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, and Columbus Thomas III. Thank you for that generosity, it helps me out big time. If you'd like to help me out on Patreon as well, the link will be in the description below. Finally, before I go, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all my videos. Link to him will be in the description as well, Decepticon.com. With that out of the way, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one, I hope. Stay moist.
petrifying punk.